Okay, well, here I am with Richard uh, Cullen of Action Coach Ireland. I'm very happy to uh, say that, Richard, you've been with us for oh, a while now, and you must be coming up to 18 months, two years. Um, four on, on Working with us. Yeah. Um, I think it was right before the pandemic, wasn't it? It was, no, well, I, I started actually in January. I gave it a few months to see yeah. how the other coaches were getting on with it. I did, yeah. Um, so I started in January and... Um, uh, so it's uh, just over a year now. Mm. I did an exercise there at the end of December uh, as I did my accounts for the final, for the year. And give or take, I've, I've spent five grand on between the Avalanche fees and LinkedIn fees uh, for the year. And it brought in 45,000 in wow. client fees for that five grand. But on top of that, um, I'm expecting another 60 grand from the clients that signed nice. uh, over the course of the year that will stay this year. Mm. Um, and, and that's not counting future years. Future so year. so for, for that five grand, um, there's, there's 105 grand at least nice. uh, coming in from it. Well, that's what we so, like to hear. That's what I like to hear. So perfect. So, I mean, let, let's talk about your, your, your career up to that point. Obviously, I know you're a bit of a veteran in the coaching world now, so you've built yourself up to being able to sell coaching. So where did it start for you? Where did, how, did, how was the first kind of, how was it at the start when building your company? Um, at, the, at the very start, I just followed what uh, was recommended from training, which was do the phone mail phone. And I had a part-time um, a contract person and then an internal person just doing the the phone mail phone strategy uh, and the telemarketing um, and it was up and running fairly quick out of the gate and up to a decent level at, you know within within the first six months um, and then what started transpiring was I wasn't I wasn't losing clients like yeah. a lot of coaches so I was keeping them for a reasonably long time and uh, when that's happening, it's it's very easy to stop marketing. Yeah, um, you know, I'm I'm as full as I want to be, so I'll just stop and get busy doing the coaching. And uh, so I stopped and started the telemarketing mm -hmm. a few times, and I did uh, a good bit of networking then as well. And anytime I go out on a networking networking event, I'd I'd sign a client. So it was never really a problem for me to sign clients or 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 you know it wasn't losing them um and i guess where i stayed for a long period of time in you know in around the top 100 coaches um by by just you know keeping clients and signing uh, you know a small number of clients every year yeah um, and i kept that going for uh uh up until about 2015 um and then uh I, I was starting to build a firm at that stage, or not, not so much a firm, but uh, thinking along those lines and, and hired a couple of people to work with me and wasn't really enjoying the whole bricks and mortar piece of yeah. it. Um, and uh, took a, took a little bit of time out, worked with Paul, uh, the um, ML, uh, for a year, and then started up again. And I, I got into it to have a lifestyle business yeah. So the way it works for me now is I coach Tuesday and Wednesday. I do some uh, group work and group training on a Thursday um, and any sales work that I need to do, which means Monday and Friday are not uh, not really work days at all. So hence you're able to get me on a video for the, like this. You built, very you built your business for, that works for you there. I like it. I like it. That's good. So let's talk. I know you mentioned about retention. So for, for the new coaches and for any coaches that are listening to this, what what, what do you think is so important about like the sales process and retention? Do you think there's any correlation between how you, how you sell those prospects and how you keep them? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I pretty much followed the 13 step yeah. sales process uh, and, you know, and having that kind of a structure to it and keep coming back to it because it's very easy to yes. diverge off it. Um, but that, that keeps it nice and grounded and, uh, keeps you know, asking the questions about what they want from the business and where, where they're trying to get to and what help they need. But in, in the course of those number of touch points, you know, a, a relationship builds. And I yeah. guess for a lot of the clients, I've become a trusted advisor with them. So yes, it's coaching, but there's a little bit of mentoring, a little bit of training, a little bit of consulting uh, going yeah. on as well. 
um, and and they end up being long term relationships. So I think my um, if if you look at the the the, the portal or the uh, action members and uh, for all the clients I've worked with, uh, it's over two years is the average. Yeah, and for the current clients, it's it's about four years. Yeah, exactly. I think that's that's important as well, isn't it? You know, and you 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 put your hand on the point the the relationship, and I think that's one of the, the key factors to any um, successful coaching practice. I know the best coaches in the world that we work with, they they're not just a coach; they're someone that that person trusts, that someone that person tells them when something's going great, and someone that tells them when something's going bad. They're they're a part of that client's business, which is, um, you know, I think one of the beautiful things about this whole this whole thing. So, um, yeah. great, great to hear that. So, obviously, marketing. And I think I think a big thing in that um, in that uh, process as well is it's uh, it, aligning aligning a, a potential client with how Action Coach does things is is yeah. part of it, but also aligning um, personal values. Uh, you know, it's, it's when I look at the difference between the clients who stayed and the clients who've come for a period of time and left. Um, one of the one of the um, big differences is when the personal values are aligned. Uh, and one of my big personal values is respect, uh, and you know, the respect that people have for themselves and people have for for the help that they bring in. Um, is, uh, is is a part of it. Um, the respect that they get in business, the respect they have from their team, the way that they respect their team and, and that value. So you know, I've, I've worked with uh, high D business owners who don't really respect their team and the, the relationships, you know, they've worked for a period of time, but hasn't gone past maybe the year or, you know, or, or the two years. Um, so the clients that have stayed, uh, you know, they really, they really value the teams that they have around them and um, they really uh, respect the help. And for me, the, an awful lot is that it's actually female entrepreneurs yeah, yeah. are the ones who quite often look out for the help, really value and respect the help, really value and respect their teams. And so I've had a lot of success with, uh, with female entrepreneurs. That's great. That's great. That's exactly great to see. And I think you, you again. You keep touching points, and it's like bringing things up. It's the values thing is important. Like a coach needs to. Yes, I think the coach needs to have set values, but I also think their coach needs to be so open to what the customer, their clients' values are, and make sure they build the right kind of management staff for that client. I know, you know, some clients are going to want X, Y, Z. Some of the clients want A, B, C in terms of what how best they work. So being adaptive to that as well is super important, right? Yeah, yeah. It just isn't one size fits all. Um, yeah. You know, every business is just unique and in a different phase, a different stage. Yeah. Uh, and, and one of the things that's that's really helped actually in the last couple of years, thanks to COVID, one of the benefits has been community. Yeah. Uh, so two years ago, when COVID started, we put uh, the clients onto a a group program, yeah. so that they get to talk about what's going on, share ideas, share stories, you know, have a bit of support. And um, th- th- all those clients have stayed. Um, they've loved working together, so we've kept it going. So every month we have a, a group call. And on, when, on Friday now, actually this week, I'm having a, a group workshop with uh, 14 one-to-one clients all coming along to do a workshop and then have a dinner afterwards. That's great. And um, you know, that's it's a big part of the action coach culture is to build that community. Yeah. Um and uh, but I was seeing it as a as a more of a quarterly thing, but they've loved the more frequent contact with each other. Yeah, and all that and especially it. since they all share the same values as well as right. as me. They all, they all, all that, get on. All that does is build a community within your clients, people know each other, the relationship gets stronger, isn't it? So you know what I'm taking from that, what you just said, and, and is that when you when you're doing the sales process, obviously following the 13 step process is important, but making sure that early on you understand what your clients' values are so you can adapt how you're going to work with them in, in the right way. Obviously, if it, if your if everyone's values totally align, then great. But making sure that you you not only connect them on a business level, but you connect them on a value level, that's just going to build that trust and it's going to make the whole process a lot easier. But it's also going to make sure that when they do sign, they stay for a long time, right? So yeah. you know, really, really vital. And at the end of the day, the system that we, we sell, an action coach's system, it, it's the same for everyone. Um, you know, what's different is the people. 
So, you know, the way that you coach, I'm sure there's, a, you know, everyone follows a pretty structured system, five ways, six steps, it builds the business. And we know that system works, so we wouldn't change it. But, you know, each person who runs that company is very different. So each person, you know, needs a slightly different, you know, management style. And I think that is the, one of the key points to selling coaching. It's, it's, yes, you present the system, which we know works, but mm-hmm. if you present it in the wrong way, in a way that's not in line with that person's values, they're not going to sign up with you. Whereas yeah. if you adapt your pitch in a way that works for that person, then they will, they, the chances of signing them are a lot higher. Yeah. So good, good learning. So Richard, I know that you've obviously been here for a while. So you, you've seen how the, the world of marketing has changed. Um, you know, I remember back when I was first involved in 2013, obviously you'd had some time in coaching before then, but when I got around, it was pretty much telemarketing, phone, mail, phone events. That was it. That was, that was, that was it. We would go for that um obviously now it's a lot more digital um and i know we talked briefly at the beginning about one of the strategies that we're working with you but linkedin as a staple um i think linkedin is moving towards more of a staple piece i know that you know people have a website and people have um you know the social media pages but i feel like having having making sure that every month some you're reaching out to prospects and just you're looking for new relationships is becoming as important to business coaching as someone's website um and it's becoming something that you know we are hoping to turn into that staple more and more so tell us a bit you know let me know your experience of the the linkedin platform so far how, how was the conversation style so i know that we go for quite an open conversation don't we um what's your opinion on that conversation style well, the, when I talked earlier about getting the business started, the two key strategies I used was phone, mail, phone, and um, networking. Um, and whenever I'd get to meet uh, a potential prospect, whether through uh, phone, mail, phone, or through, uh, link, uh, through networking, you know, once, once that rela- contact starts, once the 13 steps kicks in, once there's, you know, values being aligned and so on, uh, quite often a relationship starts mm-hmm. and what LinkedIn does is it combines the phone, mail, phone and networking yeah. uh, to do it in potentially a more efficient way. Um, and, you know, over the last two years, because we've become more virtual and, and all my coaching is done uh, through uh, Zoom now, um, Zoom or Teams, um, no, no face-to-face coaching anymore. Um never believed that would was really yeah. possible to do too, yeah. prior, prior to this the australians were telling us for years of course it's possible and we wouldn't believe them because I, I irish people are very sociable we have to get out and meet people yeah, yeah. We have to get out and have a pint with each other to to really get to know each other um but it, it does work and so combining that with linkedin has been the best of both worlds because you're doing a virtual uh networking with them and um, then the very soft approach of just reach out and have a chat with someone gets that conversation started. So it's, it's absolutely been ideal to, uh, to um, uh, build the business, you know, in, in a year, we've effectively doubled yeah. the, the revenue they've got in, in less time. Yeah, perfect. Um, so in terms of the conversation style, then, so obviously we know that we, we the, the, the gold level strategy. So obviously we break this down into three different types of leads and you've got, you know, gold level, which we would class as a human conversation. So that's pretty much how we work with Ireland. I know that there's, there's, there's lots of stuff coming in the, in, in our kind of silver and bronze level lead levels at the moment, um, which you know, we'll talk to coaches about once, once that's out, but at the gold level, the human conversation. So it's it's very open conversation isn't it? it's very networking style we may reach out to them they they say yes they're open to a conversation how do those conversations usually go for you what what, what what's your process have you got a process nailed down that you always kind of follow when you have that call uh it, the easiest question to ask straight away is like how have you coped over the last couple of years yeah you know and that just they just start talking yeah and once they're talking and once then the you know, the questions are, you know, about where they're going, what's stopping them from getting there. Um, it usually leads to uh, a diagnostic then. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, maybe it's worth taking this a step further. Yeah, and I think that's the key thing is the key factor is, is and I say this to all coaches, I say, as soon as you get on the call, you basically start coaching. So, you, you know, they're not your client yet, but you start coaching. So the questions that coaches always ask is, 
have you coped? Where are you going? What have your challenges been? And by those asking those three questions, you pretty much have everything you need to understand the pain points of that person. And it's not like we're trying to sell something that people don't need. We all know that, that, you know, even the best in the world have coaches, even the best in the world, people have support and advisory teams. So all we're trying to do is help that person realize that help is not a bad thing. Um, and it's going to actually push them forward better, far better than if they didn't have that. So it's really interesting you said that because the, the, the pain points, the questions is really important. So, so start there, right? Start, start there, start asking questions straight away. Yeah. Yeah. And like, straight away, I'm not trying to sell coaching to them. I'm not uh, trying to you know, force myself to be their coach, but just by asking those questions. And, and quite often what, what we're finding is uh, it, it is a, an opportunity for them to whiffle, you know, what yeah. I feel like expressing um, and to, to vent and to, uh, uh, to speak to someone in a way that they probably haven't had an opportunity to yeah. um, and don't often get that opportunity to. And once that happens and that trust starts to build you know it can start from there there's yeah. a trust here's somebody who's listening to me here's somebody that you know showing an interest to in me um and and then it's moving them through the, the, the you know the rest of the, the 13 step process of you know show them that there is a system there's a methodology you know there's help here that can help them uh, you know get to where they want to that bit faster yeah 100 percent. all right well look, that's um that's great. And I think that this year, hopefully we'll see the same, same kind of results, if not more. Um, and yeah, and, and as I said earlier, you know, the, the, the challenge has always been for me is, you know, get full with clients. So I only, I only coach one-to-one yeah. uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, all the slots are full. I don't need to market. Busy, busy. So what we started was a group coaching program on a Thursday. And there's, uh, there's, you know, a number of people in that now, and we're we're keep the marketing going um, to, to to keep putting people into that, yeah. and um, you know that's done virtually as well. So you know the scale leverage. is it, you know, yeah, it's, it's it's good it's good leverage. So so the marketing doesn't have to stop, which means you know why would I stop a strategy like LinkedIn uh, this year just because I'm full? And that's what I would have done in the past, but now no, I can keep it going. There's something for them to buy. Yeah. and uh, we've got some brilliant clients you know and they're they're micro small uh, businesses you know they're they're the 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 one to, or two to five employees yeah. but one or two of those are going to be the next 10 to 20 employees exactly it's a great academy level for one-to-ones isn't it it's a great academy level for that so you can build yeah. a business really strong so i think for me richard i think you put the put your finger on the point with a few points there um obviously when we're starting out communicating with people the main thing is we're communicating with them in any way shape or form um whether it's from linkedin or any other strategy the main thing is understand their values as soon as you possibly can make sure you uh, are asking questions straight away and you are basically be their coach you be their be their soundboard from from the outside i think if people followed that and then push them into the, the step-by-step process then we're going to see a lot more success um yeah. you know it's, it's kind of like having a fine line between patience and also um you know pushing the business forward but i think yeah. if you go into it with the correct mindset then the process is actually not that it's not that long it, it can be a quite a quick process from conversation to direct to clients so you know we just need to everyone needs to keep following that process right yeah I, you, you you know see talk to enough people there's there's somebody there that's going to want your want the help Exactly. um my conversion rate's reason pretty good yeah. um i talk to to five people and you know i've got more than enough clients out of it um probably i probably you know if i look if i look at the linkedin numbers um it's probably three out of five yeah have become become clients so uh you know it's it, it, it you know part of that's possibly me and possibly the way i i work um uh, I know some coaches struggle an awful lot more. It's definitely uh, that. definitely but down maybe to the coach. Need. It's definitely down to the coach. You know, we as a system, it's um, it's the same thing. So we, you know, we, we, it's, it's the same process, and that's what I mean by the staple. We're trying to deliver the, the, the same number of connections, the same number of messages. Just make sure it's a really staple strategy. And you know, yeah. the coaching element, the sales element, is the consistency piece for us. We need to try and find that. And um, I think what you, what you talked about today will be very helpful to the coaches that are looking at this and getting started with their coaching practices. I know it's a very stressful, 
year to be honest that first year of coaching is always a very stressful year and it's like you know well let's talk to as many people as possible let's be patient let's align values and let's ask questions yep. simple it's simple as that yeah all righty good thank Great you to chat with us. all right thank you so much for that all stay right, well thanks no good thank you for that richard